Hi, I'm Megan Freed. I'm with Laura Renfro and Kristen Marcroft, and we are going to talk about parenting during self-quarantine and COVID. I think where we start is communication. Okay. Yeah. So you have kids from ages, like so many things. Like so many things. <laughs> well, you have kids from you know zero all the way up to you probably have your returning college kids home actually. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, there's a lot going on in a lot of families' lives right now. Yeah. So talking with each other, talking with your partner, talking with your spouse about what your expectations are for the kids is a really important place to, to begin in all of this. So what are the expectations going right. to be and how are you going to navigate and negotiate what those expectations mm -hmm. are? Do kids get to play outside with each other? Do teenagers get to go uh, hang out at the high school or go to the park? Um, all of those things are going to require some communication between you and your partner. And you know, chances are that you married or w with someone and, and you had children because you have similar views on that. Yeah. But oftentimes, one of the most one of the things that comes into into my office for marriage therapy is we aren't parenting the same. Right. We have really different belief systems. I'm right. I'm over here on the leniency thing, and I'm way over here on being very strict. Okay. So um, families. And that's going to really. Um, be a parent going through something like this. Exactly, yeah. and especially and uncharted waters. Uncharted mm -hmm. waters and anxiety yep. and stress and being home and maybe working and maybe losing income. Everybody's, everybody's right. going through this in their own unique way. Mm -hmm. So I think the most important thing as parents is talking to each other. So one of the things I think about like that we do in, you know, even in our collaborative divorce context together, Laura, sure. is Let's take things that aren't issues, let's clear them up and take them off off the docket, right? So, Absolutely. So everything that the parents agree on, we, you know, how are you feeling about having a schedule for the kids, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm on that page, right? So good. Um, so narrowing it down to the, to the things, if any, where you have differenting parenting views. Right, absolutely. Partner. So one is kind of thinking about but the the old adage is really true. Pick your battles. Right. Yeah. Now pick more than battles, battles, pick your battles. battles. Right. Yeah. Hundred percent, Kristen. Right. Because if you're going to pick every battle, it's going to be a really long, you know, right. couple of weeks here. Especially when you're in one house together. <laughs> in one house together. Right. Yeah. Um, so choosing what's really important, and mm -hmm. maybe being able to have that conversation with your partner, like what really matters right now about snacks. Right. Yeah. What really matters right now about kids being in the house or kids being on their phones or right. kids doing school work. Right. What really matters to us? And then being able to set that as part of what we talked about earlier with structure, set that into the structure of the day and how that's going to play itself out. Mm -hmm. That's great. Right? right, because if you can get both parents on the same page that there needs to be a structure, then there can be flexibility on exactly. what that structure looks like. Right, and I think with that the, the structure piece, I think we're, we're definitely looking more at the middle school and under crowd, yeah. Yeah. and the teenagers are, are gonna be having their own, probably online schooling in the very near future, right. if, if they're still home. So the, I think there's gonna be some imposed structure from the schools right. at some point right. in the near future. You must log in. Yeah. Right. Probably so, yeah. probably so. So um, thinking about, um, being in that conversation. Now is a really nice time to practice being vulnerable and genuine. Mm -hmm. and with, with, your your, partner, with your partner, your spouse. Yeah. Yeah, with your partner, your spouse. Um, so that you can come together as a really strong team. Right. United against a common enemy. Right? right? Like we all have the same enemy right now, right? Nobody yes. wants to get sick. Absolutely. Right. Nobody, nobody wants to get sick. sick. Nobody, nobody wants, wants people to be care sick. about to get sick. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, and, and also and, we want to keep our mental health intact, right? Through it. And we want to keep our the world around us well because it's it's all connected. That's why we're all home and our jobs are affected and all the things that we're all worried about. Absolutely, because it, it doesn't it extends beyond the beyond our homes and our communities and our anymore. And so we all the whole world has. I mean, it truly should never should be nothing but united. We have an absolute common enemy, and certainly within the context of a family. Right. Yeah. So, so the parents have, that, have a parenting priority. Right. You have a parenting priority, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip your, your, um, your sentence a little bit, Kristen, mm -hmm. and say, we also are united to create the best environment for our kids right, right. now. Right. Right. So we're not against an enemy. We're actually united right. uh, around keeping our family mm -hmm. really safe and happy and yep. content, too. Right? Yeah. So Pulling I think in the same direction. 
A hundred percent. Yeah, I agree with that. So, um, in addition to communication, I think um, also kind of tag teaming, right? Mm -hmm. If you've got lots of little ones around and that's a lot of work on a, on a day to day basis or medium sized kids, whatever they happen to be. Maybe you guys set up some time where you're each kind of responsible. Oh, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. The structure for your, the parents. The parents. Not, the just parents for the not just for the kids. Right. Exactly. Time off. Right. So tag team, tag your it. You, how about you do lunch today, I'll do lunch tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That will mean like do all of lunch. Right. Right. Just take care of lunch and then maybe that's going to be my time out to go take a walk. Mm -hmm. Or work if I'm still working or, remotely. Or work. If yeah. You have, or, and maybe... All right, well, oftentimes families come home from work and they have this mentality in place already because right. one parent will come home and they'll take turns maybe making mm -hmm. dinners while the other parent is making sure homework is getting done, while the other parent after dinner does the cleanup and somebody starts the showers or the baths. Yeah. One person might do one kid for bedtime routine and another parent might do right. the other. So we're really just taking that kind of structure and imposing it throughout the day, mm -hmm. which is tricky and hard, and it's going to be taxing for people. Right. But I think it's a good idea. It's, it's, I think it's a great idea. And so first you communicated about it, and you then you do it. it. <laughs> exactly. Because I think one of the things that's going to happen is that parents are going to feel like they're kind of stepping onto each other's toes yeah. accidentally if they're not talking ahead of mm -hmm. time. So yeah. I think that, that talking ahead of time and then being able to kind of do distribution of, of times that you're going to be with the kids is going to help a lot of families and help parents stay connected with each other emotionally too. That's great. And although we don't know how long we'll be um, in this situation, we do know that it will end. So we want, we, we want to keep focused on through. Absolutely. How do we do our best job of getting through? Right. The other thing that a lot of families have in place are special nights where oftentimes it's Friday night pizza and a movie. Mm -hmm. And I think what, what I think one of the things we might encourage is, well, now we need a special night for Monday and Tuesday and <laughs> right. Thursday. Right, right. So maybe there are new traditions. Maybe mm -hmm. one night is game night. Maybe right. one night is a movie night. Maybe right. the other night is a craft night. Or maybe it's the idea that we talked about earlier, learn a language together, mm -hmm. um, do something as cool. a little family. Themed night. Mm -hmm. Themed nights. Yeah. Right. The kids are used to having themes in school right. as well, so right. maybe you pick up and do that at home as well. That's great, Laura. And I think it's an opportunity, too, um, it, it's depending on the age of the kids, but even really little kids I, can be brought into the concept of we're in this together. This is our team, mm -hmm. and everybody's a player on our team, and we all have to rise up together. Kids can be asked to rise. Oh, 100%. Right? And, and I think also respond to that, to just like, yeah, you, you know, this because they're feeling a loss of control as well and sort of inviting them into being part of the solution and how we get through this together because we're, we are all on the same team and you have a role on this team. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So as we're, co as we're parenting, we, we're really talking so far about families where, where mom and mom or mom and dad or dad and dad are living in the same house in a marriage or a relationship. Right. Can we shift to some tips for folks who are, uh, where parents are divorced or uh, not living together and how we can help them co-parent through the situation because obviously different. Right. Right. So you, we all, but you, you know that I work with a lot of parents who are trying to co-parent and having a lot of conflict. Right. Right. So when I sat down to prepare for this last night, I was thinking to myself, what would be one of the first things I say to this family about co-parenting right now? Being genuine mm -hmm. and focusing on what truly matters. So as I was thinking last night about talking about co-parents who are having trouble co-parenting right now mm -hmm. through divorce, yeah, post-divorce, I was thinking this would be a great time to resurrect some of those skills that your team probably taught you about really considering what matters okay. the most. And this applies if you had a litigated divorce where there was no right. the money. The, the, the tips are the same. The, the tips same, are the right? same, absolutely. The kids are what matters, the kids are what matters, the kids are what matters. Right, like in this goodness. context, you're not, it's, that's not your ex. That's the, that's your their child's father. father. Right. That's their mother. 
you're not exes anymore. You're that's in, that all that matters now is is who you are to these kids. Absolutely. And that, and then in that context, who you are to each other, the other parent of these kids that you love. That's right. It's actually one of the things that I, I wrote down on my um, on my notes that I was making last night. Remember that you had your children with this person, right. their mom or their dad. Right. Right. You, you went into having children together because you probably wanted to. Right. And you have these beautiful little humans that you need right. to help and take care of. Right. That's, that's great. So, again, I think we're also to communication. And mm -hmm. um, I'm working on having my co-parent um, clients who are struggling. You know, they were struggling before right. um, this all started, and they're struggling more now. So I'm doing that virtually online. If you have the luxury of having a co-parent counselor, I think mm -hmm. keeping that communication. Well, we're getting one now. Yeah. Is yeah now yeah. is not. Well, we'll get you one. Now is not. There's a, one right there. A good yeah. time to stop, right? Right. <laughs> because of the stress that you're feeling and your kids are. It may be a good time to start, and it might be a good time to yeah. start as well. Um, so thinking about when, as we've talked about with families all along, what's best for your kids as opposed right. to what do you want? Right. So you probably have a parenting plan in place. In fact, you do. If you have children, you have a parenting plan in place because you wouldn't have gotten divorced without it. Um, that parenting plan should be followed right now. Mm -hmm. um, and so if, if your days are Mondays and Tuesdays and uh, the other parents' days are Wednesdays and Thursdays, your kids rely on that. Right. They want to see both of you, especially now that their world is also starting to be filled with some anxiety. Mm -hmm. So making sure that you follow your current plan is, is, I think, very, very important. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that that would be what would be required. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, the current parenting plans remain in effect. Yeah. and Orders are still orders. Yeah. That hasn't changed. And what we know is that, of course, because this is... Um, we're all still we're working a little differently because we're more uh, remote now. But one of the things we're helping with people is a lot of parenting plans have flexibility built in, right? Right, and that flexibility ability is being utilized now. Um, so it's a good opportunity again with Laura's with Laura's note about keeping the the kids in the center of how you think about things. If there is a parent who you can help out because the particularities of their job make a, an adjustment to the normal parenting, make them able to be more available and more present for the kids, that's something that you can work through together. And what we're helping people do is setting up how do people communicate with each other and resolve it's this so, on their own? Because it, it, it all comes back, back to that. To that. That's right. If not, can we get help with co-parenting? Um, particularly now, courts aren't open for all matters. Emergencies, yes, but for all matters, no. So how do we support people in figuring this out and moving forward through this in a way that works for the kids right. and both parents right. um, so that we're helping people navigate through it and I would just give us a call because some of the ways that we're coming up with to slice and dice how we're going to um, make sure the kids are taken care of and mm -hmm. the time frames and this you know it's really it, it, there's you know it's, there's a lot of opportunity for creativity net right there, now there is there's also a tremendous opportunity um, like you you know you alluded to earlier um, the opportunities like learn a language well this is the same thing Right. This is also learning a language. This is also an opportunity for on the other side of this that maybe the relationship has changed for the better with your with your ex. So that frankly you don't need us anymore, you know? I mean, a, a big part of our practice is post judgment work and people struggling with communication and, and their, you know, their their whether their orders aren't working or their people somebody's not doing what they're supposed to do. Um, you know, if if in this people get better at that and, and we do less of that work, like I would consider that a win because it's just, it's, you know, we're here to help people with that, but I, I would prefer not to be needed for that. If, mm -hmm. In all honesty, I would prefer not to be needed for that. And there, that's another opportunity in this that you're just being forced into this. You know, yesterday I was livid about this thing that, that my ex did and it just doesn't matter today. Well, that was always true. Well, and also, it actually was always true. Also, it's an opportunity for lawyers and 
mental health professionals to help their clients. I mean, I can always pick up the phone and call right. um, my clients the ex's lawyer, yeah. right? They are sure. able to communicate. And we can together. help, right? If it's yeah. if, if two people are having a difficulty solving the problem themselves, professionals can help you right. solve the we problem. Can be a bridge. Yeah, to we, can be a, we can yeah. be a bridge. That's Absolutely, right. yeah. Which, and all of us can take that role right now to really help support families mm -hmm. who are going through transition in a difficult right. time. That's who right. already were, right? Who right. already were struggling for, you know, whether it's high conflict, low conflict, or just the, the reality that it's a change. Right. Um, right. And now we, you know, pile this on. And I think what, what one of the things that I'm, that I'm coming to as we're talking is that we, we've always been here and we yeah. haven't disappeared. We're no. still here. Yes. Right. And I think that that is a message that a lot of people might be missing right now right. because they're feeling that self-isolation. Right. That's right. And, and if we can break through that, that's hugely important because we're more here. We're, we're here for this. Mm -hmm. Right? We're here for you in this, and that's why, Laura, we're so grateful that you're here with us today. Um, before we let you go, um, one of the things that happens for a lot of our clients, and it's happening for a lot of our um, teammates at Freed Marcroft, is we have families that are now blended families, right? So we have two, two parents who are living together mm -hmm. with their two single parents that are living together does right. that make sense right. yeah. new families mm -hmm. and how to parent through that let's let's talk a little bit about that situation where you have both you have theoretically up to four parents involved two out of the house two in the house mm -hmm. two sets of who's in charge on different kids mm -hmm. um and and everyone's spending more time together and everyone's spending more time so stress, I think, yeah. is one, yeah. right? So we go right. back because our houses didn't get any bigger. No, the houses <laughs> didn't get any bigger. Right. They didn't grow. <laughs> right. The kids didn't suddenly start getting. They so may long have connected. suddenly gotten smaller, <laughs> but they, they didn't get bigger. Did. They right. probably did. So going back to our first segment was about taking care of you. Yeah. So right, you want to be a good blended family, good step parents, good um, significant others, are, and playing a role in kids' lives mm -hmm. and your partner's lives. And then by extension, their exes' lives. Right. Probably the most important thing to do in that situation is take care of you. Right. Take care of you and refer back to our first segment where what we were talking about. Put your own oxygen you. mask on first. That's, That's right. right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I think, you know, it depends on how blended families are working. Some people, um, many, many people, I think now have um, adhered to the philosophy of connect, don't correct mm -hmm. with your stepchildren. Yep. Um, and so those you know, biological parents are, are being at the forefront of dealing with their kids regarding discipline and education and medical, and they share that with their other, with their ex, right? Right. Um, so that connect, don't correct, I think is a phrase I've been using for many, many years. And I think that now is the time to make sure that people kind of adhere to that because with tensions rising and stress happening and um, other, you know, exes being involved in that blended family as well, there's the potential um, for increased kinds of conflict and disagreement. And differing opinions. And differing opinions. I mean, you're, you're wearing a lot of hats in a blended family. You're the parent to your children. You're the step-parent to your new spouse's mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. You're the par you're the spouse or partner to your spouse. Yep. Um, so many roles. But yeah. there is an opportunity, I think, in, in some situations. There are also more hands on deck for child care in a way that I think is is good, right? And and I think that there, there is an opportunity to help each other out in the parenting step parenting role right. that um, that could be good and a bit of a, a, a allow for a little bit of you know tag your it yeah right? right that's true that's true yeah yeah absolutely I think that the, the communication again is back to where we, we go yeah. with not only the the person you're in a relationship and a blended family with but also your ex and really. Right really making decisions about what's important right now and can there right. be some small things that can just wait until later right. that, you know, can you just kind of say, you know what, given all the things that are going on right mm -hmm. now, this particular issue is not 
important right now. Right, right. right. And, and then maybe when we're on the other side of this, that will stay true. Because it is maybe true. That will because it was true. true before. That's right. Maybe on the other side of this, those small things will have just gone away forever. Absolutely. That's right. Right? Yeah. Or we will have learned new ways to work through the next issue. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Laura Renfro. Thank you, Megan <laughs> and Kristen. Thank you for having me. It's been a great time. Awesome.